So today's video is going to be my current watercolor collection. I'm going to show you all of the pellets that I have and all of the tubes and any watercolor crayons or pencils that I might have and I am going to show you all the pellets and everything and then I'm going to show you some swatches as well. So I hope that you guys like this video. So this is currently where I am storing all of my watercolor palettes in this copper wire bin that I believe I got from Target and it just has all of my watercolor palettes in here. Then here I've just got little watercolor pans, half pans. Then in here I've just got my Daniel Smith tubes, which I won't be swatching because I have already put them into half pans which are in one of these palettes, so it wouldn't really make much sense to swatch them separate because they're the same thing. Then over here I have my Windsor and Newton watercolors and same situation as the Daniel Smith. I will be swatching those from the palette, not from there. And then some other watercolor stuff. I've got my Bleed Proof White here and my India ink. So both of those are Dr. P.H. Martins. Then I've got my watercolor brushes here. And in here I have these watercolor crayons by Statler that my 8th grade art teacher gave me when I won the art award at the end of 8th grade. So I will also be swatching those. And yeah, let's get into it. So here is the very first watercolor palette that I'm going to show you. It is my Koi watercolor palette. So it comes with this little mixing palette like this and then you pull it off and all the colors are here. And usually it comes with sponges on each side and a little water brush but I don't use those so I took them out and you can tell that I've used this one a lot and it was my very first real actual watercolor palette that I got and I used it so much and it will always be very very special to me. So filming watercolor swatches is definitely not an easy thing to do so I am sorry that the angles are not the best but this is kind of just all we have to work with right now. So the Sakura Koi watercolors do not have names. So these watercolors are a little bit chalky and as you could see from the palette itself they do tend to crack but I still think that these watercolors are beautiful especially for a beginner or someone who is on a budget because I was both of those when I got this and they did everything that I needed them to. They still do. I still love them and I think that they are absolutely beautiful. I think that they are wonderfully made and I love the container they come in. I love the colors and I just, I overall love it. I know a lot of people hate it and they think that they are terrible quality, but I just could not even disagree more. I think that they are beautiful and lovely and I recommend them to anyone who wants to begin with watercolor. I love that vibrant pink there. And we've got a really pretty vibrant purple coming up right now. And that's beautiful, so pretty. I wanted you guys to be able to see the palette while I was painting, but I think I'm gonna zoom you in a little more so that you can see the swatches a little bit more clearer rather than the palette itself. I think that that's really all that matters right now is that you see the swatches.
So here are my Sakura Koi watercolor swatches. The next one that I got was by Winsor & Newton, and it's just this little palette right here. So as you can see, it's got 12 colors in it, and I think that these are all great colors. Clearly I've used this one a lot too. It comes with that little brush, which I love, and all these colors are very nice and pigmented, and I love them. So this was my first Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolor palette. Next we have some of my favorites. These are the Fine Tech Gold watercolors. And I love these so much. I use them all the time. Especially that one right there. As you can see, I've used that one very, very much. I just love gold watercolors and I think that these are so beautiful and so nice to use. These watercolors work best if you put the water on the watercolors and kind of let it sit in the pan for a little while. That way the watercolors kind of soak it up and get a bit of a texture to them instead of it just being like a completely transparent, almost glitter. So that is what I have done here and it might be easier to see once we do the close-ups but oh my goodness why can't I get this in the right spot but they are absolutely beautiful I find that sometimes these need to be layered a bit in order to see the true opacity of the color but they are still absolutely beautiful Moon Gold is definitely f my favorite, seeing as I'm more of a champagne-y white gold person as opposed to a yellow gold person, but I still love all of them, but Moon Gold is definitely my favorite, and that one is actually almost gone, so I'm going to need to get a new one soon. And that's the nice thing about these palettes too, is the fact that you can pop the colors out and you can buy them individually. It's very difficult to get it out right now since there's like, if you can see right here, there's like none in there, so it's very difficult to get it. But it is still extremely bright and it's shiny and it's just, for me that's my perfect gold color, that nice light white champagne -y gold. It, it doesn't have any yellow tones in it really. It's more of like a sandy color. And then we also have one silver, which I really don't use much because it's not very opaque at all, honestly. I really have not been able to get much color out of this one, as you can see. So I'm not really sure where I would use it, but it is still very beautiful and I would keep it definitely 100% but hopefully someday I will find somewhere to use it where it will have its perfect use. Alright, here are the beautiful golds and sadly it is hard to see their shimmer and they aren't really showing up true to color 
right now, but I assure you they are beautiful and sparkly and shimmery and very metallic and pretty. Next I've got this Jane Davenport palette and I believe that this one is just called like Naturals or something like that because inside it's got a bunch of neutral, beautiful natural colors right here and I love these. They are beautiful and bright and you can definitely see that I've used them. I love palettes that come with mixing trays and I am definitely a big fan of Jane Davenport watercolors. So there we have my Jane Davenport Naturals palette. So I've got another Jane Davenport watercolor palette right here and this one is the Brights. And as the name suggests, it comes with a lot of beautiful neon bright colors, which I absolutely love. It's kind of hard to see from the pans, but when you see the swatches, you will see how beautiful and neon and bright these really are. So here are the Brights colors, so vibrant and beautiful. Next I've got this one that I made from an Altoids container and I will show you what that looks like. So it's not completely full, but I've got a lot of reds and greens in here and I can't wait to keep filling it. And these are Windsor and Newton paints. So this is a palette with just greens and reds and it's not full yet but I find that I feel like I'm always needing different shades of green and different shades of red that I just don't have and I have trouble being able to mix. So I bought a bunch of Windsor and Newton greens and reds and I decided that I would put them in my Altoids palette because I didn't really have anywhere else for them to go. And it can be very hard to judge what color the watercolor is going to be just from the tube because often they really aren't that accurate. I once got a purple thinking that it was a pastel purple because the tube was pastel purple but it was really extremely extremely dark so it's very very hard to tell but these did seem like beautiful colors and they are beautiful colors I love all of them and I think that with these greens and these reds and the ones that I do already have it won't be that difficult for me to 
make the colors that I want. I will probably continue to fill this palette with reds and greens unless I feel good about these and then I will choose another color that I will add to it. I may have said this already, but the colors definitely do vary in person. There are definitely some things that the camera can't pick up that you can see in person. So that's just one of the flaws of making videos like this is it's kind of difficult to see the true color of the watercolor. Especially with the never ending question of how can I possibly get good lighting. So here I have another Winsor & Newton palette. This one is fairly new to me, that's why it's not as used as some of the others. But this one also has some beautiful colors in it. It has a lot of similar colors as my other Winsor & Newton one, but it does have a few that are different that I really, really love. And the ones that are the same are ones that I use all the time, so I know that I'll get use out of them. Next, I have another Fine Tech palette. This one has a bunch of beautiful pearly colors. They're all so beautiful, and this one right down here is duochrome. It's like a brownish purple and a green at the same time. It'll probably be easier to see from the swatches when I swatch them. So yes, this is my set of Fine Tech Pearl watercolors, and unfortunately, the website lists the names, but it doesn't say which name goes with which watercolor. So unfortunately, I cannot provide you the names, but they are indeed the set of 12 Pearl Fine Tech watercolors on Blick Art Materials. So. It should be quite easy for you to find the set if you want them. So unfortunately I can't put the name with each one, but the set itself should be fairly easy for you to find, and then maybe from there you can find the names. But these are fine tech, and they are metallic, but they have a different texture than the gold ones. They are not as hard. They're more bouncy, kind of like, almost like a clay consistency. And I find that I don't need to pre-wet them. Like, I'm getting this with just wetting them for the first time. And they lose their texture a lot quicker. The Fine Tech ones that I showed earlier, the gold ones, really never lose their texture no matter how much water you put on them until they start to wear down. But these, I have one in here that I've used quite a bit already, but not nearly enough, you would think, to make the texture go away, but it already is. Um, you probably saw that in my previous clip where I showed you all of them in an overview. It was that duochrome brownish green one. And so I found that quite odd and interesting that these are from the same brand, yet they're so different. I still love these very much though, and I will still get a lot of use out of them. The 
this next one is my beautiful duochrome one that I'm very excited to show you. So it looks red here, but hopefully when I show you an overview of the swatches, you will be able to see better the duochrome effect that it has. Whoops. I almost swatched over that swatch. Luckily it didn't really add any color. Here we go. That's odd. This looks like it should be a bright purple and it's coming out gray. I feel like it shouldn't be swatching like that. Hold on, I did swatches of these in another notebook. I want to see if it looks the same. So in this notebook, the purple is an actual purple and it's not that gray. So that's kind of concerning me. I don't really know why it's gray. I don't think it would have anything to do with the water, but let's see. Maybe it's just this angle that I'm at right now. It's hard to see. Does it look gray to you? It looks kind of gray, I guess. I don't know, that's odd. I'll show you these swatches in this book after because these swatches came out really good. So here are these swatches, which I don't think came out that good, but I'm about to show you the ones in the other book, which I think came out a lot better, and I'm not really sure why. Maybe I did pre-wet them and I just didn't remember, I don't know. But can you see the duochrome there? I drew with it on my, with my pen, uh, paint pen to see if it would go over smoothly, and it does. But you see how it's like a green and brown duochrome and then all these are nice and metallic. So yeah, not sure why that happened, but here you are. Next, I have this small mead and watercolor palette that I made myself. It's not full yet, but it is mainly purples, pinks, and blues because those are some of my favorite colors to paint with. And so now we have another handmade palette with Windsor & Newton paints, of course. So these are mostly pinks, purples, and blues, with the exception of one brown because I had it and I didn't know where else to put it. And it was a very good artist quality Windsor and Newton paint, so I wanted to do something special with it, so I put it in here. And pinks, purples, and blues are my favorite watercolor colors because they're, well, they're my favorite colors in general. I wouldn't call pink one of my favorite colors, but the combination of pink, purple, and blue is my favorite color combination, and purple and blue are my two favorite colors. So I just love how they look. I love how vibrant they can be and how pastel they can be in all of their different shades and I just think that they are absolutely beautiful and I think that all of these colors are wonderful and they just make me so very happy. And so I just wanted to create a palette that had a bunch of my favorite colors in it and that's basically what this is. There are still four spots left in this palette, so I will continue to find more colors that I want to put in it. Probably more, more blues, definitely more blues. Because I think Payne's Gray is like a dark blue color, but the only true blue color I have is Indigo. And even Indigo, you know, Indigo is like a mix of blue with a bit of purple so it's not even like a true blue necessarily. So I want some more nice bright blues for this palette and maybe a couple more purples. I think I'm good with the pinks right now. You can see all the water droplets from my careless water mixing. Look at that upper rose, that is so bright and beautiful. And now we have this giant palette here, which I am going to fill with a bunch of high-end watercolors. Right now I only have four Daniel Smith paints in here right now, 
but I intend to fill it with Schminka, more Daniel Smith, and some other that are higher end and more expensive. So these are in my big palette as you just saw and there are only four of them so far but I cannot wait to get more of them and to fill this palette up with completely high-end artist quality paints and I just think that they are so so beautiful and I want this whole palette to just be filled with Dan Smith and Schmincke and other high quality watercolors that are very expensive and I just love them so very much. The vibrancy and the texture of Dan Smith paints is just amazing. It is so much better than any other paint that I've had. And now here we have some watercolor crayons that my middle school art teacher gave me in 8th grade when I won the art award for the school. They originally came with wrappers on them, but I found that I like it better when I take the wrappers off and just use it like a normal watercolor palette where I kind of put my brush on the actual crayon itself and then paint with that. I don't use these too much, but they have such bright, vibrant colors that I want to keep it around because sometimes I really need those bright colors and I really like to use these for that purpose. So, like I said before, I kind of just use these like a normal watercolor palette. I just put my brush on them right in there without coloring on the paper first and that is how I paint with them. So that is what I'm going to do for these swatches. I really don't use these that much but I wish that I used them more. I used to not like watercolor crayons or watercolor pencils or anything like that until I figured out that I could use them this way. So hopefully because of this I'll use them more because I can use them in this way but it's still, it kind of makes a mess, so I'm not sure how much I'll be using these, but I know that I will still keep them because they were gifted to me by my art teacher and they remind me of when I won the art award, so they are very special to me and they do work nice. They do work nice. Sometimes when I really want to paint, but I don't know what to paint, I'll just like sit down and start swatching my watercolors. Does anyone else do that when you just like really want to paint, but you don't have any ideas of what to paint, so you just sit down and like start swatching stuff? I do that like all the time. It's a very well-rounded palette too because as you can see it's got a lot of colors. I think there are, there's 24 in here, so that's very Oops, I got another color in there, oh no. And they are definitely very, there's a very diverse color range I feel like. Like they've got all the colors and then they've got different shades of each color too which is nice. The one thing that I will say about using these as a palette in themselves is that the crayons are so close to each other that I find I keep picking up colors that I don't want to pick up and I have to keep rinsing the brush off and like trying again because they're so close to each other and of course I want to give you like an authentic swatch so that's a bummer but it's okay. If you watched my three years watercolor video, these are the ones that I used for the Galaxy and they were for the final layer of the Galaxy. 
I was having trouble getting colors to be super super bright because at the time I didn't really have a lot of palettes and so I used these to get that final layer super super bright and they worked really well. Um, I used that super bright pink um, light magenta and the dark mauve because they're super super bright and then I used the purple and these two blues here and it just made the galaxy so bright and vibrant and it was exactly what I needed. Another thing about using these crayons too is that they tend to get like kind of a little film over them so that can be hard to get at the color. You kind of have to scrub a little while until that film comes off because they are crayons so they do have a bit more wax than you know a watercolor would but they can still be used as watercolors because they are watercolors just in a crayon form so there's the wax. I know a lot of people don't see the point in black or white watercolor but I love black and white watercolor. I use them all the time and I, I'm always happy when I see black or white watercolor, honestly. I use them and I think that they're good. And here we have the swatches of all the Statler crayons. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you enjoyed seeing all of my watercolors and the swatches and I know that it wasn't filmed the best. I know that the quality could be a bit better. Most of that is because of lighting because I do have a Canon camera. Like the camera quality is great. It's just, it's the lighting that's the trouble. I have a little kind of ring light. It's like a cell phone ring light and it, it's okay but we're still, I'm still trying to figure that out. I know I've been doing YouTube for almost four years now, but I'm just so busy that I don't have time to film all the time. So I feel like I'm not getting better as quickly as I should. I'm not growing as quickly as I should, but it's harder now anyway to grow on YouTube. So I'm just gonna keep taking it slow, I guess, and hopefully we'll get there. But yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what other art and bullet journal videos you would like to see. And yeah, I love you guys so much. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, I love you and I will see you in my next video. Bye!